Hi guys, this is a tutorial for the FXGL11 networking service and in this tutorial we're going to send some arbitrary data between server and uh, multiple clients. So if you're planning to send um, entity or input data then there is a multiplayer service which is a different service and a tutorial on that will be a separate one. This tutorial is only uh, for cases where you want to send arbitrary data, data that is specific to your uh, use case. So I'm just going to uh, build a quick example so we can see how we're going to extend that to be a networking example. And I assume you have a project with FXGL as a dependency, FXGL 11.11 .11, uh, as a minimum. whether through Maven, Gradle, or UberJar, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to position a checkbox at 100, 100. I'm going to statically import all of XGL calls, so I can easily use its DSL. And we should see a checkbox at, well, somewhere here. There we go. So this is a checkbox in this one application. Um, let's run this in parallel. If you go to run, and you should be able to edit configurations. So if you select networking sample or whatever your um, application name is, then go to um, allow parallel run. That will allow you to run the same application, uh, multiple instances of the same application because we'll need that to test server client stuff. <clears throat> right, so we have two applications. Uh, suppose this is going to be the server on the left and on the right we're going to have a client. So when I click this on the server, I want this thing on the client to essentially synchronize. Uh, and if we can get it to work with one client, it will work with multiple clients due to how API is constructed or implemented. I'll first do a very sort of simple API use, the most commonly used API as it were, and then we'll talk a bit more uh, sort of technical stuff. Right, so first of all, because we're running from the same application, we need to know if we are the server or we're the client. If we have a dedicated server application with dedicated client application, there is no need to make that distinction because the application does that kind of by the nature of it. Suppose we're going to ask the user if we're the server or we're the client. So we're going to run once, we're going to run this bit of code uh, after 0 0.2 seconds. The code that we're running is it's get dialog service show confirmation dialog is server and then the answer is billion which is yes or no depending on what the user clicked and we'll just assign that to <clears throat> is server So if I click yes, then is server is yes, otherwise it's no or false. So now that we have this information, let's construct our server first. To do that, you obtain the networking service, which is get net service. And then you go new TCP server and you provide the port. I'm going to use all files. Server start asynchronously. That's it. That's all you need to do uh, in order to get the service started. Um, the API has been reworked a couple of times, so it should be easy to use reasonably. And you're welcome to provide, provide feedback as well, because this is more or less version 2 of the API, and we can potentially improve it further, depending on your use cases. And that's everything you need for
for the client to connect. So at this point, they're connected, uh, but they don't do anything because we're not sending or receiving any data. So what do we want to do? We want to take this checkboxes selected property and we want to listen for changes in that property. Uh, this is is selected. So if this is true, then we just click uh, to select it. And if it's false, then we just deselected it. We want to send this data from the server to the client. So we need to reference the server. By default, it's a server bundle. Um, I'll talk about bundle at some later point. So we've created the server, we've referenced it, and we now can create our bundle which is, think of it as a map data structure that you can send between two machines. Um, check box data is what I'm going to call this particular bundle. I'm going to put is selected as the key and the value of is selected is going to be the value in that, uh, for that key. Then you can call server broadcast bundle. This means send this bundle to every connected connection or every active connection, which is why it's going to work for any number of clients in this particular case. Now for the client, we need to read the data or we need to receive. So we've done the sending bit and we need to figure out the receiving bit, which is client set on connected. This is a callback. Uh, this is the function that will be called back when the client establishes a connection to the server. And it gives you th the connection as an object to which you can add two different types of message handlers. Uh, if it doesn't have an effect suffix, that means it's going to be called in a background thread. With the fx suffix, it will be called on the UI thread. We're changing the UI, therefore we want this one. The connection object here is for convenience, in case you want the same message handler for multiple connections. The message here is of the same type as this, and it's actually the bundle that we sent. So what we can do is we can say boolean is selected message get and the key name is the one that you put in, which is is selected. And based on that, we should be able to set selected um, property of the checkbox. So that should be everything we need to do, really. So let's first run our two applications. I've not selected server or client in any of them. So this is going to be the server and this is going to be the client. So if I select that, something crashes. Um, okay. Let's have a look. Oh, fair enough. So it actually did select it, but because it's the same code, it's now calling the server, which doesn't exist on the client. So let's just guard it. Yes and no. So if we select it on the server, then the client also selects it. <clears throat> and obviously, if you unselect it on the client, you're just modifying it locally. There is no connection 
as we're currently uh, implemented, there is no connection from client to server, just one way. And if I unselect it, um, it also unselects it on the client. And we can have second client is server no. And it works on both clients because we use broadcast to send to all active connections rather than to a specific connection. So at this point, the sort of basic usage is done. And that's everything you need to know in order to send data between two um, endpoints. I'll just briefly talk about uh, some other API that you might be interested in. So this set unconnected um, is also the same for the server. So we could have done set unconnected and it gives you the connection back. But this time it's the client that's connecting. Another thing that uh, you might be interested in is there is a set on disconnected function, which is self-explanatory. And going back to this bundle, which is a data structure like a map to send your uh, serializable data between two machines, there is also a bunch of other types that you can use. So for example, you can say new TCP server, and then you can provide your own server configuration saying, I'm actually going to send only strings. I don't need complex data structure. Or you can say, I'm going to send low level byte array because it's faster, because there's no conversion going on. And I can write uh, fast code on, in my sort of game side rather than let FXGL figure out how to convert it. Uh, that's a use case, and that's how you might add your own implementation uh, of byte array as the message. The UDP is in draft mode, which means you can use it, but it may not always work. So it would be good if you tried it out and then um, let me know if it does work or not. What else? Um, so once you've constructed your server object, you can also go to obtain the start task. Start async is just a convenience method to just start it in a background thread. But if you need more control, as in you want to know when something fails, when something succeeds, then start task is what you want, which is something that you can run either synchronously or using background thread. It's up to you. You can also stop the server from listening. That means it's not going to listen for any more connections, but it's not going to disconnect any of the connections that are already present. Use case for that might be if you're planning to have only a number, a limited number of connections at any given time. As for more complex stuff, such as uh, replication of entities, input, property variables, so things that are gameplay related. That will be handled by the multiplayer service and I'll talk about that in a different tutorial. As for this one, um, I think that's it. If you have any questions about the networking API and how to use it, um, I might do a proper sort of game tutorial rather than just talking about the API. And as always, thanks for watching.